Hi, Hi YouTube, YouTube family. family. My name is Alicia English. And I'm Philip English. Welcome back to our channel. Today, we are really excited because we are going to finish up the jackknife couch. All right. Let's get our think chair back. Don't cut yourself on the jackknife couch. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> We are going to head into the studio where it's a little bit warmer because as you can see, we're wearing jackets and stuff inside the camper. And so I wanna work where it's a little bit warmer. So we're gonna head into the studio and get this jackknife couch finished up. If you missed yesterday's video, I'll put the card above for you, but we started doing the base of the couch. And today we're going to finish the two back pieces, actually three back pieces, that need to get upholstered to be able to get this couch back in the camper today. On yesterday's video, we finished the base and I'm excited today to start the three section back piece of the jackknife couch. And I think what we're gonna do first is we're gonna unupholster this old fabric. 1986. 1986 <laughs> and see kind of what we're working with. We also need to do that bottom piece there and we're going to do it in a similar way that we did the bottom of the base of the couch because it was basically the same setup, right? So yes. we're gonna do that wood that was your idea to put in the back there. So thank goodness for Philip's brilliance yesterday because we couldn't get the staples for the pneumatic stapler to attach obviously to the metal that is behind here. And so we're going to use some pieces luckily, of thin. Yeah, luckily we have some leftover. We tried to save as much as we could when we pulled the cabinets out of the camper. So this, these were in the base of the cabinets. So we're gonna use these because it's really light and we're gonna use it for the backs of the cushions and the back of the base part for the back of the jackknife couch. It's a tongue twister day. <laughs> Sounds good, let's get started working. Let's go. Yesterday I removed all of the buttons that were on the whole jackknife couch and so I actually saved them, set them aside and what I wanna do is upholster both of these back pillows. And now what I found was that I had quite a few comments yesterday on our video saying, why don't I just make the back rectangle of the couch all one shape? That way it would be a lot easier to upholster. But I actually really like the look of the two cushions because I think it will look more like a couch and less like an RV seat or like a bus seat where it's just like two rectangles. And so I'm actually just going to kind of rise up to this challenge and be able to upholster both of these. And I'm going to Velcro them on the back. That way we can put them in and out and kind of use them as like an alteration if we ever need to in the camper. So I'm going to put a very thin board on the back of these and then I'm going to be able to use my pneumatic stapler, wrap them and then be able to Velcro this to the back base that we're gonna work on after we get these two cushions done. And then one of our YouTube family members sent me an amazing step-by-step -step photo tutorial on how to reupholster the buttons. So I'm going to use the fabric I'm gonna use on this and be able to show you in this video how you can do it if you wanna do it yourself because it was a really cool tip and I was so thankful for it because I haven't done that before and I think rather than like painting the buttons or just gluing the fabric on, this is gonna work out really good. So I'm gonna get upholstering these. Bye-bye, 1986. Getting rid of the yuck. The foam and everything is actually like not bad at all. I'm not really overly worried about it. I'm going to spray it with an antibacterial disinfectant like we did with the base of the couch and then leave it for a little bit and then we're gonna start upholstering over top. I don't have access to a whole bunch of foam right now. I can't get out to get any supplies. So we're gonna use what we have. I know this is super old foam, but it's actually in like good form still. There's no smell to it whatsoever. And after I put some antibacterial on, I think it's gonna be fine. So this is the option that I'm dealing with right now. So what I'm gonna do now is put the pieces that we actually cut on the back, and then I'll be able to start wrapping and putting my uh, fabric around. And I did this because rather than using my sewing machine, making a sleeve, I was short on fabric because I got this fabric several weeks ago. And now that we can't go to get more supplies, I'm using what I have. So I'm actually gonna put a little bit of my spray adhesive glue along the back of the board, put this on, and then actually wrap the fabric. And I think it's gonna stay in place. I'm not gonna have any worry about it. And then I'll be able to attach my industrial Velcro to the back of this and to the back of the base we're doing for the couch, and it's gonna stay in place. I think it's gonna work out great. Using my pneumatic stapler, I'm going to start upholstering these cushions. And what I like to do is do 
at least one or two staples in the middle of all of my sides, then do my corners and then fill in my sections on the side. So this is actually a pretty easy upholstery job because it's a very rectangular shape. So I'm going to utilize this wood that we put on and work my way around. Oh, it's a... T I was like, <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> Where did that like, go? Where did that go? <laughs> I was thinking it was like in my hair on the roof. It was Where like did it go? magic. Okay, so what I do is I have a corner point here because my rectangular piece of fabric is what I started with. Right. And so what I like to do on a squared off corner, my corner is a little bit rounded, so it's slightly different than if I had a perfectly square corner on a rectangular, you know, four inch thick piece of foam that I would use on a bench or something. But the premise of doing this is pretty much the same. So I take the center piece. This is actually quite an excessive amount of fabric here, but I want to make sure I had enough. So all I'm going to do is pull it a little bit tight and I'm going to put a staple holding this center in. I have my wood here. And so I'm putting it in the middle here I like to put a couple when your fabric's not super thick. Then I take this section that I am left with and I need to make sure that this is super smooth on this side and create some type of a little seam here to be able to cover, like close over. Because I'm a corner, I'm rounded, I'm not perfectly square. If you were square, you can get it right along the straight of that. But I'm a rounded corner, so I have to work and just make it look really clean and like seamless on the corners. So I'm going to do basically the same idea, pulling it this way. So I know if I can pull that there, that's gonna be nice on that side. So I'm going to put another staple here. And then I can tighten this section here because all of this is going to be behind. So this is very different than if I was working with a rectangular piece. Then I will clean up this. This is all excess here. So and are you do... gonna use that excess for the buttons? Yes, so I'm gonna cut off a bunch of this extra furl that we have on the back that we don't need because I'm going to need a bunch of squares to be able to create the button covers. So I know that I have enough extra to do that. Typically, I don't work with this close of an amount of fabric that I need for a project, but right. I had to get this fabric weeks ago and now I'm just using what I have at home. So I wanna make this same look which is gonna be rounded on the front side. Remember, this is the back side. Sometimes you just wanna make sure that you get it matched up perfectly around the front side. So that I know I have enough to make that flat there. My board is there. And then ideally, I need to be able to do the same thing to all four corners so that they look the same. I'll show you this corner when I get this side finished off here. So you can see from flipping it over that this makes a really nice clean corner. So even though it's rounded, we were able to get a really seamless look. So now I have the challenge of doing the exact same thing I did to this corner to my other sides and corners, and then I'll be able to cut off a lot of this excess, and I will fill in and make sure I have enough staples all the way around. I like to go in over the end and make sure I put in a little bit more than I probably need, but my fabric's not super thick, although it is an indoor outdoor fabric. And I'll probably put some extras in just to be sure. So I'm gonna pull my center in again, apply some staples, work to create the seamless corner. And all you're doing is folding over the edges and pulling it really tight to kind of minimize the crease in the fabric. Yeah, right? I really want to kind of make it look like I don't have any corner lines at all if I can. And depending on what your fabric is. Or the foam. Or the foam, you can do that. So because I'm the rounded corner, I have to tweak it just a little bit to make it perfect. But I'm actually being able to get it be nice, so I'm thrilled. It's always good to look at the corner that you already did if you forget how you do it or how you did it. Now 
Okay, so I have another seamless corner at the top. Now I'm going to do my other sides. You want to make sure when you staple that this side piece isn't underneath where you're going to put it down, otherwise you're not going to be able to have fabric to manipulate on the sides. The cushions are looking so good and I can't wait to get the buttons on, but before I do, I don't want to get overzealous on the buttons and working on that until I fix this base. Add it to the keep pile. <laughs> you don't want to save that fabric? Ew. <laughs> We're not keeping this to sit on, that's for sure. <laughs> wrapping a really tight present, but I'm not getting a present inside. This is the tan canvas that I have that I got to kind of practice on. And so it's close enough in color that when I do that back piece, you aren't going to see it. And so it's actually in the same color family. Maybe you can't really tell on the camera because it's showing up a lot brighter than it really is, but it is a really nice tan color. And I'm just gonna wrap the back that we just did on here with it because I have lots of it. And that way I'll be able to finish. And then I'm also going to use it for that pull strap that you actually pull to be able to pull the couch down because it turns into a bed, which I love. And Chase, our son who's 10, is super excited that this is gonna be his bed space. So I'm going to use this canvas and upholster this just like we did with the base on yesterday's video. It's actually really easy to do this and it is a more squared off shape, so I can do way better co uh, corners on this. And I think... And again, all we did was we have a piece of quarter inch ply in the middle to staple our fabric to. Yeah. Now I have the whole couch upholstered and I'm so excited. I'm like just absolutely tickled pink over <laughs> how the fabric looks. It's just exactly what I was envisioning. It upholstered really well. It was a little bit complicated. We had a few milestones, but we were able to overcome them using just the fabric scraps that I had already here at home. So the whole cost of the fabric for two of the cushions, the big base of the seat and the backing base were a total of $10. I had $3 worth of fabric on the darker tan and then $7 worth of fabric on the actual whole couch. And so now I'm going to use some of the scraps that we cut off from the upholstery to be able to upholster the buttons because I do want to put the buttons back on. I don't really want it to look seamless <laughs> as usual. I want the look of the dimensions of the couch. And so I actually, spoke to one of our YouTube family members, Terry Sim uh, Singleton on Instagram last night, and she sent me a little photo tutorial on how I was going to upholster my buttons. And I've never done this before, so thank you so much for the tips. You guys are awesome when you send me you know, your expertise when I don't have those maybe in a certain area. And so what I'm doing is I'm going to cut a circle larger than the diameter of my button, and then I'm going to do a little loose stitch all the way around, pulling it tight to gather it around the top I'm gonna have to show you to make it make sense, but thanks to Terry, I'm going to be able to accomplish this, I think. So I wanna go out wider than my actual button. And this doesn't really matter if it's a perfect circle or not. So I'm just going to use this as a guide here. It's more of a, an octagon <laughs> than a circle, but that's okay. Then I'm going to take my needle and some thread and tie a knot. I'm going to double it up. That way I know it's extra strong because amateur. To go around the perimeter of my button. I'm just going to do some longer stitches. Not going too close to the outside. That's why I gave myself extra room. That way my fabric doesn't fray. And 
And then I'm gonna put my button inside. Hold the back of my button and I'm going to very carefully. Oh no, did I make it too small? Oh no, I didn't, okay. Ah, look at it. I did it, I'm just worried I'm gonna break my string. Okay, and then I'm going to close this off. I'm gonna make it really tight and pull it tight. Probably gonna put a few more stitches around the back. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to, but I think it'll keep it in place if I do a couple more. I did it. Okay, that is so brilliant. Thank you, Terry. Okay, so I have the back of my button. I can still use the post on the back of the button to be able to attach my string that will be through, this will adhere onto here with a super tight knot. Let me get that through. Okay, so this is going to get tied on to the back of my button. This is going to go and get threaded with my upholstery needle through the couch to the holes that we drilled on the underside. I'll be able to pull it tight and then it will loop through this back piece of quarter inch plywood where there's a hole. I can get my string through there. One string. Okay, so that will be up against the underside of the couch. And then this string that I have left at the bottom will get attached to this flat back button that will allow this to not go all the way through. I hope that makes sense. But one button upholstered, 12 more to go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what do we have to do? Uh, you Lisa lined up where I'm going to auger bit the uh, buttonholes for the backs of the pillows for the couch. Yee. And we're gonna do the same with the seat, right? I think so, yeah. Yeah, we need a couple more holes. So. to tie this and then I'll be able to stick that in the hole and then it won't be able to pull through. Oh, cool. I am so excited with the way this looks. Are you ready? Oh. Should we show them? Yes. Okay, here we go. Totally upholstered couch for the camper. I am so excited about this. I know we don't have the best lighting right now and they still need to get some more of the white paint painted surrounding it, but oh my goodness, what a difference compared to that 1986 couch. We were able to put all of the original buttons back in, minus the one we just adjusted where the buttons were on the seat. I think it looks incredible. This is an indoor outdoor upholstered fabric and I think it's going to do like, just be so good for wear and tear. I know that we're gonna have a bed mat on it when Chase sleeps on it, but look at how amazing this looks. And it's so comfy. Go sit on it. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> can't wait. Test it out. This is my spot right here. This is your spot in the thing chair? Oh! <laughs> wow! Okay, I'm coming to join you. Please come, think. We have a new think couch. <laughs> <laughs> it's so comfy. It is unbelievably comfy. And this fabric is nice and cool when you sit on it. And it's just like, it's actually dreamy. I honestly think I like it better than if we would have invested in a brand new couch. And best of all, it cost me a whole total of $10 in fabric to redo this whole thing. And I just used a whole bunch of staples I had left from a previous project. And I used a couple tiny pieces of thick thread that I also had from another project. That was it. That's all I needed to do this whole thing. A pair of scissors, an X-Acto knife, some, some guts, to <laughs> tackle the grime that was on this. That yeah. was pretty much it. Oh, yeah. So this took us a total of two full, almost eight-hour days to be yeah. able to upholster the couch. But, like, I don't have any experience doing this. The no. look doesn't either. And I think if we were going to do it again, we would cut it in half at least Easily. the time, for sure. Easily. And then, in addition to that, next time I would obviously order myself extra fabric. But you can't even tell that there's a little bit of different fabric at the very back and no one will see it. 
no one will know that it's there except for 105,000 YouTube family members. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm happy with it. I think it looks really good. I can't wait to show the kids because they're going to be really excited. Leave a comment down below if you love what we did to the jackknife can uh, couch. Let me leave a comment down below if you love what we did with the jackknife couch. I'm not going to forget the name of it now. It's going to be called Jack the Thinking Couch. <laughs> Jack, Jackknife the Thinking Couch. Perfect. Well, we have a lot more thinking to do on what we're going to do with our next projects in the camper. So let us know what you think about our camper series so far. If you've missed any videos, check them out on our playlist. If you're not already subscribed to our channel, what are, are you, you waiting, waiting for? for? Hit the subscribe button and join our YouTube family. Thank you guys so much. This Wait, is, is it Friday today? It's Friday today. Are we doing a live tomorrow? Tomorrow morning, we Wait, are. What day is it? <laughs> what day is it? We are doing a live tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time so that we can chat with the other half of our YouTube family members who have been asleep when we've done our other live sessions the last couple of weeks. So we're really looking forward to chatting with everyone. We have another video also for you tomorrow in addition to our live and then another video Sunday. So we are loving the daily uploads just as much as you guys are. Absolutely. Okay, we are gonna go get some food in our bellies because this think couch is so comfy. We Neither one of us might want to get up and cook dinner for the family, but we have to. Bellies are grumbling, so we are going to go make some dinner and edit this video for you guys and then probably come out later and have a tea on our think couch. Absolutely. Do a little bit more thinking. We have to come out here later for sure. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. We love you guys. We love you. And we'll see you on tomorrow's video. Bye. Bye.